So congenital line of thalamus presents a special difficulty for several reasons because there is a lack of orbital volume stimulus. So as a result, there is a hypoplasia of the facial bones and you have a smaller orbit which in itself presents a limitation which you can't get beyond. And there is an overall reduction in the, all the structures that are available to you the lateral canthus to medial canthus distance, the palpable fissure height horizontally, vertically, and the amount of tissue that is available to you. You can see here how much the orbital volume is reduced in an anophthalmic globe. So that stimulus in the early stages is prevention is, is important and that is why an early intervention is the key for getting the right kind of results in these cases. And one of the important techniques for doing it is putting in conformers of increasing size and this and I'll request Dr. Sachin to cover in his talk in the beginning before he goes on to the rest of the prosthetic management. But there are several surgical techniques as well which can be used. You can put in intraorbital implants which can be non-expanding which then sometimes you need to serially change and increase you need to alter both the size of the socket as well as the orbit. And balloon expanders have been used for that purpose. There are several modifications to that where you can change the volume of the intraorbital intra balloon. There are spherical expanders which will expand their size when they go in and these are useful as we'll see. Then for bony deformities, you can do osteotomies of various kinds. There are a lot of uh, studies in the literature outlining different kind of techniques for that. So to the, for the expansion of superficial palpable fissure, which is done as the first stage before expanding the orbit, you need these socket expanders. And these come for with the uh, material which can expand on being, on um, coming in contact with water. And these are available in 6, 8, and 9 millimeter size, which enlarge to 11, 14, and 18 millimeter within a month after hydration. So orbital expanders, which increase the orbital volume, are also available in different sizes, which are 6, 8, 9 millimeter, and so on. And these are spherical in nature, and they can expand the orbital size. So in an anophthalmic socket like these, you can use the socket expanders like that. And then you pass sutures through the holes that have been provided in this. You tie it with a permanent suture like proline. But the additional precaution that you have to take is that you have to leave space on either side for the expansion to take place. So when you tie these sutures, you put in an artery forceps in between so that the knots are further away and when this expands, there is space available for them to expand. So after you've done this, after you've done the first stage, then you can go in for your orbital implants in the second stage, where you, through a small conjunctival incision on the temporal aspect, place an implant in the orbit. The problem sometimes is that they become eccentric and then they may not serve the purpose that they do. The osteotomies of various kinds that have been used are C-shaped or U-shaped with bone grafts to expand the orbital volume, which is also needed in many of these cases if the, the, the intervention has been delayed and there has been a shortage of the orbital volume. 